North Carolina. Right. Mm -hmm. um, Dr. Forbes, Bishop Plunk and I are on a barnstorming mission. I think in five or four months, uh, it wasn't always all three of us, but I know we hit nine cities. I think you did them all, right? We did nine cities across this country where there were these events. And significant numbers of people came out. And we spoke to them about this need for the African American church to be involved in this fight against HIV AIDS. So one of those events, I was riding to the airport with whoever was driving us. And James Forbes leaned over and said, Sanders, you need to get the CDC to fund you to do this in a way that allows you to have uh, not just these one day events, but do something that over time builds what might be sustainable. That was the seed that he planted in my heart that day. And here we are today. Um, because we actually got the CDC to agree and to buy into this model. Um, Reverend Dr. James Forbes is, um, is a preacher's preacher. Yeah. He's a teacher of preachers. Um, he is prepared in every sense of the word. Um, if you're Pentecostal, he's been there. As a matter of fact, uh, my good friend Will Campbell, you know, when he gives a description of churches, he says there are three kinds of churches. He says there are high steeple churches, there are low steeple churches, and there are no steeple churches. James Forbes has been pastor, preacher, teacher in all of those. It started as uh, a fire, brimstone. Now I'm going to go so far as to say tongue speaking. Because I heard, I heard in um, the um, the Lyman Beecher lecture series, when he tells everybody in the room, he said, now just in case you're all waiting for me to speak in tongues, let me get that out of the way. Do you remember he did that? Yes, you did do it. <laughs> and at Yale University. <laughs> James Ford spoke in tongues. You remember you also told about healing. You, you were loose. You were loose. But, but that's only one example of great preaching moments in this man's life. He's the pastor in Mexican America, the minister emeritus of the Riverside Cathedral Church in New York City. Um, the church that was built by John D. Rockefeller Jr. Yes. as a memorial I guess, to his family and their work. I'm convinced when they built that church, they had no idea no, that one day James Forbes, no, <laughs> Harry Emerson Fox, that he pushed the car a little bit. Yeah, yeah. Right. Yeah. And, um, and, and Sloan Coffin pushed it a little further. Right. But James Forbes pushed it over the edge, all the way. And people are still flying around New York City as a result. Um, he's a graduate of Howard University as an undergrad. I guess went to Union Theological Seminary for the Divinity School, and then up to Coke in Rochester, where he has a doctor in ministry. Uh, but his gift is one that we are just blessed in our generation to have a voice like his voice. And every time I am near him, every time I hear him, I find myself discovering that there is so much more that we all have to do to continue to reach higher, to go further, to do more. Because the victory that we claim is ours. I'm convinced that we'll just go forward. So without any further ado, I'm going to introduce to you the Reverend Dr. James Alexander. Yes, sir. you.
worship and adore Glorify your name in all the earth. Glorify your name. Glorify your name. Glorify your name in all the earth. Holy Spirit, lead me. Guide me. As I move throughout this day, yes. may your promptings deep inside me show me what to do and yes. say. Yes. In the power of your presence, yes. strength and courage will increase. Yes. In the wisdom of your guidance yes. is the path that leads to peace. Yes. I want to give thanks to God for the privilege to be with you today. And I want to say how proud I am to be linked today in this ministry with Bishop Blunder. Yeah, yeah. And to have a reminder of seeds that we saw yes. for Dr. A. Yes. Yes. If I had any more seeds, I'd give them to him because he knows what to do with seeds. <laughs> And the head of the Department of Health here in this community who is taking time out from what must be a very demanding task. Just be with us because in some way he senses that he may be God's gift to this community and we may be gift to him as he fulfills his ministry. about this ministry that we've gotten started. And this time, in preparing to come, had a different element about it in terms of you think you are coming to learn something. The Lord took me through a serious exploration of the theological issues that are before us. And I'm going to share with you today something of what I have learned as the Lord was trying to speak to me to get me ready to speak to you. Um, sometimes we like to read the finished report of where we have come and read the polished statement. But I think you should know what went into my mind as I was thinking about what I was going to say to you today. So on this piece of paper, which is actually torn, um, the first thing at the top of this paper, and you just pick up little fragments as you wish, I'm not giving the main speech, I'll give a title to what I want to say later on. But um, the first thing that I wrote on my sheet of paper for notes is the addiction beneath the affliction. Yeah. <laughs> Whatever HIV and AIDS is, we know it's an affliction. But at the bottom of it is an addiction. I hate to surprise you, but the addiction is not primarily something that people with HIV AIDS have. The addiction which leads to that affliction is in our culture in general. I suspect that a case might be made to say whatever makes for HIV AIDS that we all have the uh, elements of the addiction that leads to that addiction and other kinds of afflictions that we all have. And uh, I'm going to probably work up to Somewhere in the midst of what I say this afternoon, I'll probably say what that addiction is well, that, yeah. that, that we all have. Preachers and teachers, community leaders, because they want to figure out that there is something of a common source. Then we might not need to be convinced that it's a common problem that we 
difficulty to be looking at. That's a worse thing. Come on, brothers. Woo! <laughs> <laughs> I'm just talking some notes on my paper. I think this should be like this. <laughs> Choosing life above a slice of life. Mm -hmm. Are these just fragments now? Okay. Mm -hmm. Little nuggets that I picked yeah. up by the Lord yeah. talking. He's got some folks get hooked on a slice yeah. of life. Come on. The Lord said, I have come that you might have life and that you might have it more abundant. If I settle for a slice, yeah, that's right. That's right. which is a, a profound translation of what Brian Holdeeper talked about when he mentioned the word sensuality. Yes. Mm -hmm. yes. Sensuality for him was more than just about sexual interests, yeah, yeah, appeal. Yeah. He said, and we've all been blessed with multiple vitalities of life. Yeah. When one of the vitalities of life asserts itself as the central dynamic of our life mm. and dares to sit in the seat of centrality, it usurps the authority of God who is the center. Ooh, what? And once anything that ain't the center sits in the center, disease is on the way. Yeah. 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 I love sugar. Mm -hmm. It is one of the vitalities of life. But I also am pre diabetic If sugar gets to be my longing morning, noon, and night, and I make decisions about what I'm going to eat, or the exercise I'm going to take, on the basis of sugar, I may be sweet, but I'm dying. And you can fill in the blank for yourself. If there's any aspect of your life that decides that it's going to be the boss, and that all of the other aspects of our lives, our various organs, our body, mind, or spirit, is going to take orders from that one thing, you're in trouble. I'm just I'm so Y'all find this interesting too. I was reminded that I'm getting prepared. Lord, try and get me to get the two minutes. I'm going to announce what I'm going to be talking about. Okay. <laughs> These are just fragments. <laughs> Do you realize that growing up requires muscle control? So that the mother sits the kid on the pot and go make him potty. Because she's tired of all the family. <laughs> and she actually doesn't know that she gets mad and wants to smack him up because he won't potty. <laughs> Little does she know that his capacity to control his own sphincter muscles is to say when he's going to do it or not is a part of his growth and development. And pity the poor child that never develops his sphincter muscles. Yeah. 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 You're going to do more than buy pampers. Yes. Yes. You're going to stay busy a lot. Yes. Yes. You, you don't know which, which way the Lord is going to lead me in the light of this. Another line, on being in charge, and not enslaved. Mm -hmm. And um, that has to do with our sexual life. Are we in charge of it or are we enslaved? All right, all right, all right. And notice I didn't ask the gay folks to answer and then the straight folks to answer. I didn't even make any distinction. Whether you are gay or straight, mm -hmm. 
bisexual, it's transgender, and even if it seems queer to you, are you in charge of it? Oh, sir. Or is it in charge of you? Now, of course, if it's abandoned you <laughs> as an area of interest or potential, <laughs> you can stand on the side and look and see what other people can answer. <laughs> 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 Another, another line on about the emancipation of the power of our impulses. Yeah. Let's say open confession is good for something. There are some times when it's been a long time since I had sex with my wife, but the uh, there's a lecture that needs to be given tomorrow morning. The question I have to ask myself is, who wins out? The vocational commitment to be ready in the morning or getting it done tonight? <laughs> so if anybody's shy, you might well look for the door because I'm going to lay it out. <laughs> And, and, and that is not, that doesn't determine whether you're gay or straight. It determines whether you're in charge or whether it's in charge of you. <laughs> oh, mastering impulses by the power of principle. Recovering appreciation for the importance of discipline. Mm. And then, I read a whole lot of scripture. I I, my eyes are red, not because I came in on a red eye, <laughs> but I have to read all of these texts all over again, just to make sure what I was saying to you today was grounded in the Word. Mm -hmm. I will tease you by simply quoting some things, and you can read it for yourself. I'm not going to take time to do all of this. 2 Timothy 1 and 7. For God did not give us a spirit of cowardice, but a spirit full of power and of love yes. and of a sound mind. Yes. Or, translated in my new revised standard version, self control. Yes, that's right. Mm. Some days, that's in the second Timothy, they talk, three and four talk about lovers of pleasure rather than lovers of God. Mm -hmm. mm. Or, we're swayed by all kinds of desires. Uh, 1 Thessalonians 4, 3, for this is the will of the Lord, your sanctification, that you abstain from fornication, that each one of you know how to control your own bodies in holiness and honor, not with lustful passion like the Gentiles who do not know God. Now, I mentioned that word fornication. I think you're going to say something about fornication again. Because mm. I want to know, what do you preach about fornication in your church? Mm. Well, when have you preached about it? And did you say more than don't do it? Because if you just say no more than don't do it, it was probably not a very helpful sermon. That's right. That's right. But God did not call us to impurity, but holiness. Who defines what's impurity? What's natural to me or what's natural to somebody else? Yeah. That's good. That's good. Who doesn't define it? Come on. Well, whoever defines, put to death, therefore, whatever in you is earthy. And then in the word fornication comes again, but it also says impurity, passion, evil desire, and greed, which is idolatry, which fascinates. Preachers that don't preach against greed, but preach against sexual expression, they, they are cherry picking. Come on, yeah. Come on, yeah. You're very selective. I don't why, why is your, is your sermon always about sex? That's right. And we are being killed by greed. Yeah. Yes. 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 And sex too. Yes. 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 I think you need an offering. <laughs> <laughs> but now you must get rid of All this is in the Bible. This, I just, see, because when I start talking, I won't have time to quote these verses. So I just want to, Colossians 3 and 3 talk about put to death, therefore. And also in 3 and 8. But now you must get rid of all such things. Anger, wrath, malice, slander and abusive language from your mouth. 
that do not lie to one another. Get rid of the old self and put on the new self. Be God's chosen one, holy beloved. Clothe yourself with compassion, kindness, humility, meekness, and patience. Some of us ain't going to go to heaven unless the Lord is grading on the curve. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> <Word>. <laughs> anyway, I, I, I'm, just, I, all I just want to and I'm, I'm reading and reading. I read for Philippians, beloved, put on is always true. By the way, this one <clears throat> was occasioned by Bishop Plunder. They've invited me to speak to their international convocation in July. Of nineteen of two thousand and and thirteen, and I don't like to accept the invitation unless I think maybe I might know what I'd be talking about. <laughs> but but see, we've gone from L G B T and Q, and some of our read in seminary about L G B, but I have never really understood what was at stake in the issue of T transgender. Yes. So I told them, yeah, I'll accept on one condition that you all make available to me some insight about transgender. That was the most helpful thing. Transgender. You understand what I mean when I say transgender? Mm -hmm. The people who, who are born and have complicating dynamics between the, um, the, the physiology and the psychology or, or multiple options. Or can either go to be, I can either be a girl or a boy. Get clear, get clear. And, and, then you, and then either the doctor decides what to do, or then wait for the family to decide what to do, but the family wait for you to decide what to do. And if the doctor decided what to do, inside your head, he can't do what can only be done by you. And you got this situation where you got to decide, okay, so which one am I going to be? Which set of genitals are, 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 am I going to keep? Yes. And which one I'm going to let go? Yeah. And, and what kind of operation am I going to have? And what kind of hormonal stuff do I have to go through to make it work? Uh. And then complicated is if you decide yeah. that you already have friends, like some folks who have the complication, you man a man person who has double possibilities, married to a woman, can decide that he wants to have, since the psychology is more woman, he wants to make the sex operation to make him fully a woman. And then he has to decide if he's going to be a woman, is he going to stay with the woman he's married to? Come on, does that mean they got in that relationship? Um, I'm, re I'm reading up all this stuff about the complications. Right. Yes. And then, within the community itself, if they decide they're going to be one rather than the right. other, then the others get mad at them because they made that choice. Right. Anyway, anyway, it was, it, 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 all of this come up just because you were asking me to come to somewhere in 2013 to talk to an international group of people. Absolutely. And I studied it. This is what the Lord gave me. This is what my text was. I already know what the text was. All right, all right. I guess. Therefore, my beloved, just as you have always obeyed me, not only in my presence, but much more now in my absence, work out your own salvation. Yes. Yes. Fear and tremble. For it is God who is at work in you, yes. enabling you both to will and to work for God's good sake. <laughs> That's wow. what the text gonna be. July. <laughs> <laughs> All right, wow. Yes, sir. You, you get it, Tom. And while that has to do with the complication of the problematic, I think it's true for all of us. Yes. Yes. Each and every one of us line us up around the building, examine us, do a psychodynamic inventory of our fantasies of our desires, of our longings, etc. When you get through, guess what? She can't work it out for you, and you can't work it out for me. I got to do the best I can within the framework of the givens and the not givens. Yes, yes, yes. All right. Yes. Try to work out how whatever I do, and this is probably 
the heart of what I want to say to you today. The goal would be that whatever I do, I have to try to live up to the standard of P within P or OP within DP, which is my way of getting your attention to say the goal for each of us in regards to our sexuality, if we can do the best we can, and I'm going to talk a little bit about that now, get ready to come to what I was going to talk about. I would like for us to be able to say, our pleasure is found within the context of divine pleasure. Yeah. When we have discerned God's will for the situation that we represent. Yeah. Yeah. Preach, preach. So that whatever I do, mm -hmm. if I could say, Lord, are you finding pleasure? in what I am doing. Yes. And if, if with integrity, I'm not talking about just putting words in God's yeah. mouth, playing divine ventriloquism, right. Right. making a dummy out of God, I move God's mouth and say, wow, <laughs> <laughs> oh, yes. oh, yes. oh. if, if God say, I'm digging you, yeah. Yeah. Uh -huh. I like that. then even if you don't like me, you do the best you can. I hope that that God likes you in your stuff. <laughs> That's enough text to read. I could read from Philippians. I, all of this, I mean, Ephesians. Mm. Ephesians 1 5. We are destined, God has destined us for adoption as his children from Jesus Christ according to the good pleasure uh -huh. of God's will. The good pleasure. So the praise of God's glorious oh, yeah. grace that he freely restored us. Okay. And you can and you can have impulses and don't have to act on them. Yeah. Ephesians 4 says, yeah. 4 says, be angry, yeah. but do not sin. Yeah. Oh, okay. Do not let the sun go down on your head. And don't make room for the devil. Yeah. All the all the laws of <laughs> Oh, if they should find it, try to find out what is pleasing to the Lord. Yes, God. And then once you find it out, finally be strong in the Lord mm. and in the power of His might. Amen. All of these are my notes. I'm not going to have to read them all to you. These are the notes that I use to think about what I want to say to you today. Right. Now I'm going to tell you what I want to say. <laughs> 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 to read. From a Pentecostal text. <laughs> At least I call it Pentecostal because I used to hear it all the time when I was growing up. My dad was a bishop of United Holy Church of America, Southern District. Southern District. <laughs> this is what it says James chapter 5, verse 13. Are any among you suffering? I heard a brother in fact say they should pray. Now see, we haven't been we haven't read this a long time. Otherwise, you wouldn't have said what you had to say today. We haven't called folks to pray. A whole a lot of folks are suffering out there. Yes. And we should say, well, we should pray. Yes. Yes. Are any the cheerful? They should sing songs of praise. Yes. Uh -huh. yes. All right. The lavender choir used to be in my church. <laughs> <laughs> And Lord no, in Riverside. Yes. Could they say? Yes. <laughs> Are any among you sick? Or could I say, let me. Are any uh, among you sick with HIV AIDS? Yes. 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 If so, they should call for the elders yes. of the church. Now, now, I told you I've been reading the Bible, so I'm not just. I'm not just proof text and one or two favorite texts I've got. I've, uh, I've read a lot of Bible. It says that anybody out there got problems with that, yeah. that they should call for the elders of the church and have them pray over them, yeah. anointing yeah. them yeah. with oil in the name of the Lord. Yeah. And the prayer of faith will save the sick, 
and the Lord will raise them up, and anyone who has committed sin will be forgiven. Yes. Therefore, confess yes. your sins to one another and pray for one another so that you may be healed. Yes. That's the text. Yes. That's the text. Yes. So the next few minutes left after I explained what I was reading when I was getting ready to tell you what I was getting ready to say. I would like to speak to you today from the theme calling for the elders of the church. Oh my God. <laughs> Our community is in crisis. We are losing the strength of our people through several threatening assaults against our well being. We are losing them through wars on scattered battlefields around the world. Dying in Afghanistan, still, some are still there in Iraq, if the truth be known. And uh, we may not want to say they got boots on the ground in Syria, but. Uh, <laughs> Uh, drones in the air, okay. Not all is there, Pakistan. And then, all right, anyway. You, we, got, we got a lot of our kids dying in urban ghettos through gang violence. Yes, yes. To be in a family where the credential is you gotta maim somebody or kill somebody to get the love. Something strange about that. Yes. The mass incarceration of our youth depletes manhood for family life right. and the workforce. Right. And contrary to what Mr. Bush was saying about Iraq having weapons of mass destruction, poverty, poverty right. is a weapon of right. mass destruction yeah. even in the age of President Obama. Right. Now, HIV AIDS continue to drain the lifeblood of black men and women in startling excess of the national averages. Yes. No. Right. More hours of being still carried away. So we are here today because someone read James chapter 5. All right. All right. All right. And uh, Brother Sanders was hearing, and when they called for the elders of the church, he said, well, if that's what's supposed to happen. He did not want God to be guilty of fraudulent advertising. Right. <laughs> God had put an ad right there in the book. It's a good book. You're sick? Call, I'm giving you the number. Call church, C-H-U-R-C-H, number one. Call mosque, M-O-S-Q-U-E, number two. Call synagogue, 103. And he saw the ad and recognize that people did not believe it, so he's been going around the country trying to call the elders of the church so that God won't be discredited for fraudulent advertising. The Lord says if you want to deal with the problem, you get the preachers together. You, you, you get the clergy together. And, and, and they'll be able to help. Come on, preacher. Well, <laughs> I want to acknowledge that the reason we were remiss in the beginning, brother in the back, the reason we really didn't step up to the plate at the beginning is we really had not paid attention to James 5. All right, all right, all right. We, 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 we were busy preaching the word. And we, we had heard, touch not the unclean thing. And we joined the morticians. Can you imagine that the preachers join the morticians if we are scared to pick up a body? Yes. That's right. And the Lord did not give us the spirit of fear. Well, then where'd you get it from? Well, anyway, now we know that the advertising put in the book by God said we could do something about it. Yes, yes, yes. And that uh, we have been given a special responsibility, and if we don't do something about it, we have to give an account yes. for our lack yes. of response. Yes. Mm. So I invite you this afternoon, in the time that I have left, to consider the possibility that hmm. the whole process of the HIV/AIDS pandemic was a race, and that things have improved. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. We can come a long way. Yeah. But that in a relay race, there is a final lap. Yeah. <laughs> and I want to make the case that the baton mm. is now, it doesn't mean that those who, the health department is already running in the race. Mm. Yeah. Yeah. 
You know. The CDC is running in the race. Yeah. But this is the final lap. I mean, we are getting to the place where it is conceivable that HIV AIDS can become history. Yes. And they are running, and they've got to, even if they don't want to, they've got to hand the baton to us for the final leg of the race. And I'm giving it to you why in a few minutes. And that's what I'm going to talk about. I want to tell you why this thing cannot yet be completed without the running of the clergy in this race to end HIV AIDS. So, I would like to speak to you on the three headings. One is our calling, two is our message, and three is our ministry. Let's do the first one. Our calling to this ministry of healing of HIV AIDS. How many of you in here are preachers? Let me see your hands. Okay, it's most of the preachers. All right. Community service in one form or another. Mm -hmm. I want to always honor the pluralistic context. Are there people from other uh, religious traditions other than the Christian tradition? Mm -hmm. Yes, what is your tradition? Well, um, Kundalini Maha Yoga. Okay. But I also am. Uh, Christian, but also Muslim, but everything. Because yes. I believe it's only one. I see. So I have different spiritual practices. Okay. All right. The teachings of Jesus the Christ yes. guide my, my journey as well. Amen. But your practice makes it possible yes, to discern practice. more deeply yes, what he had in mind. Absolutely. Anyway, uh, most of what I'm saying then will be within the Christian context. So I'd just like to be inclusive uh, whenever I need to so know who's present. Right? Yeah. Number one, Jesus. Jesus modeled the ministry of healing. And now I'm going to do this more, uh, more I, I think, uh, formally. You and I know we all preach about Luke 4. And we love that passage. Oh, Jesus yeah. stood up for a read and it was given to him the book of the Father by the name. And he opened the book and found the place where it written the Spirit of the Lord. We love that. But the truth you need to know is that Jesus was not primarily just a preaching preacher. Come on, man. Jesus was a healing yes, sir. and a preaching yes, sir. teaching preacher. Uh -huh. So that in the uh, maybe I don't even know about it. in the ch in fourth chapter when he got through uh, preaching, you know what they did? They ran him over the hill or tried to <laughs> right. throw him off the cliff. Don't mention the word cliff. I'm so worried about the economic situation. <laughs> 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 don't be missing that makes me nervous. Right? <laughs> By the way, if you have ever been threatened with being thrown off the cliff, you're not preaching in Jesus' name. <laughs> And so many preachers that are not here today are afraid that people will throw them off the cliff just by coming to this meeting. All right now. Instead of throwing you off the cliff, hey, if you haven't been threatened with being thrown off the cliff, you didn't speak to Jesus' word. Yes. Not clear. Scared to come to a meeting to talk about HIV AIDS. You ought to turn. Give, give, give me your credentials. Be careful, be careful. Jesus, Jesus, got through recovery, went to Capernaum, and went for Peter's wife's mother was there, and she was sick, and they told him about it. And he didn't say, well, you know, I had a service this morning, we're going to come to the No, he didn't come to the He said, where is she? And he went in there, put his hand on her, and when she, he got through touching her, she got up. And fix something, yeah. fix something. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, what a mighty God. No like her. Awesome. Awesome. And that evening, folks heard that he was in the house. Uh -huh. yeah. And they opened up the first clinic, yeah. the healthcare department uh -huh. in Capernaum. Yeah. <laughs> Opened it up, the clinic, right yeah. there. And they brought everybody in. Yeah. And, the, I, and I want to ask you this, where were the disciples? Wow. I don't, I, I just, I just imagine. 
imagine that they had to be arranging the folks. Some of them came on cripples. They had to make space for them. Uh, so I think Jesus was just modeling that night. Now, I'm going to do this because this is what I want you to do. But if that's not clear enough, Jesus also enlisted the disciples in healing because Jesus told them, you go. And as you go, I want you to preach the kingdom of God. Yeah. Heal the sick. Yeah. Cleanse the leper. And that will be at least first semester and second semester, raise the dead. Yeah. Yes, that's what, I mean, when he first called his disciples, he told them, listen, you want to just talk to y'all. Yeah. You sit up there and talk and get your hum going on. That's not the whole thing. Yeah. Churning is not a If you're going to be in my thing, you, you got to, you got to heal the sick. Yeah. And, 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 and if, you're, if you're scared to touch problems, wow. you're not going to do too I know some of you, I remember my first ministry I had on my blue serge suit in Wilmington, North Carolina. A guy had been hit and knocked out of his car. He was in the, in the ditch. And, and I'm the pastor. I move people out the way. So I go over to see if I can help him out. And uh, as I get closer to him, I find there was water in the ditch, and he's bleeding too. Oh. So a combination of the water and yeah. blood on him, yeah. and I'm going to go over to try to help him, sir. And, I, and he reached out to me, and I saw myself try to reach back. Do y'all hear what I'm saying? Yeah. I'm a young minister thinking that I can serve ministry in a blue serge suit. Uh. When I mean, folks are in the ditch oh, with blood and water yeah. and blood. Oh, if you care about your blue serge suit and you can't be touched by the infirmities of those who are like us, something wrong with you, you're in the wrong business. You hit this, but this ministry has peril in it. It's the truth. thought that Jesus didn't mean that they were to do it. Just check this out. This is so relevant to the age ministry. You'll find this interesting. That they passed by a man who had been blind. They talk about it in John chapter 9. And as they looked at Jesus, Jesus was looking at the man and wouldn't seem to want to move on. And the disciples thought that they should show Jesus that they were very theologically astute. And so they tried to imagine, why is Jesus looking at the man with such intense gaze? Yes. And so they thought they'd speak up and say, Sir, Jesus, uh, who did sin, this man or his parents, that he should be born blind? And Jesus put his hand, and I know there's no videotape of him like there is of you, but I can see him with his hand on his head. <laughs> who, who said? What? Is, what? Uh, I know, no, he didn't use eschatological language because he's the Christ. But what the devil are you asking about uh, uh, who said? Neither this man nor this person. That ain't the point. The point is he is blind, and the reason is there primarily is that the works of God might be manifested on it. So y'all stop worrying about the cause. We would have been further down the road if we weren't spending so much time. But well, when are my cows there? Was it the blood transfusion? Was it a needle that got stuck in the, in the wrong way? Or was it something about sexuality? And was it sex with the right folks? Preach. Jesus said, Help us today, Jesus. Shut that, that suffering ignorance up. Yeah. Spending your time trying to analyze yeah. what caused what. Because yeah. whatever caused it, something caused that that yeah. caused yeah. that. Yeah. If you want to go to the infinite regress to get to the origin of sin, well, you got a long journey to go. Yeah. And when you get through and put in your report, you will still left out something. So don't spend your time in a whole lot of analysis. But I, you know, I wouldn't mind helping them, but you know they did the wrong thing. Uh -huh. <laughs> yes, sir. Yes, sir. Uh -huh. All right. Jesus, Jesus says no. Oh, the works of God might be manifest. And then the King James does not say it, but the New Revised does. It says, we must work the works of the Son that sent me while it's day. But night is coming. No. Work. That's it. 
God told them, we must do it. We must do it. What you see me do, that's what I want you to do. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Oh, my brothers and sisters, I, I think that we need to know that Jesus enlisted the disciples. And by the way, when they were not doing it, he was disappointed. Oh, yes. Oh, yes. What's wrong with you all? Sir, we brought my son to your disciples, and they couldn't do anything. Yes, yes. It was not in that department. Well. It was not that jurisdiction. Well. They were waiting for some other EMS to come. Yes, yes, yes. And Jesus says, oh, faithless generation. Yes. Which, by the way, in, in, instead of feeling guilty, he really didn't say how bad the disciples were. He recognized that they were a reflection of the culture in the end. That, 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 I want you all to get that. He, I'm glad he did not fuss at the disciples. Yes. He said to all the old faithless generation, because y'all don't believe nothing. You don't believe in the power of healing, really. You don't believe that grace is greater than all our sins. You don't the old faithless generation. Bring them to me. And Jesus critiqued them. You say we need to pray? How would you? See, I'm ganging up with you back there. You say we need to pray? So the disciples said, after Jesus healed the boy, he said, they said, they, they debriefed that. The disciples did debrief him like y'all do in the department. Yeah. <laughs> they debriefed him. Master, yeah. ma master, why could we not cast him out? Yeah, he yeah. said, yeah, this, this kind coming only. Yes, come on now. Mm -hmm. Then the Holy Ghost came on the day of Pentecost. Mm -hmm. All of this is under the heading of our calling to this mission. What I'm really trying to make case is, really, if I don't participate meaningfully in the healing of AIDS, I'm not living up to my call. Yeah, 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 yeah. 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 Pentecostal power came on the day of Pentecost for the yeah. fell on Peter and John, and then they found themselves going on the third chapter of the beautiful temple, or the temple called Beautiful. Yeah. And yeah. there was a man there who was looking for arms, yeah. silver and gold have I none, such as I have hereby to leave in the name of Jesus Christ. Rise up and walk. Yes, sir. You got the Holy Ghost? Yeah. And, and all of you who are in here, you have to have the Holy Ghost. All right. I didn't say you spoke in tongues like you said. I said. I said. I My tongue just got tangled. You know what you said? Thank you, thank you, fast enough. You, you, how many of you are ordained? Let me see, ordained. I believe it's him. You ordained. You know, a mother, as her husband was being ordained, and all the robed preachers gathered around him, and her sons asked Mama, Mama, what are they doing to him? And Mama said, they're taking his spine out. <laughs> That's what she thought. There was mother. They were they were praying that the Holy Ghost would come upon them. Yes. So like Jesus did not go forth without saying, "The Spirit of the Lord is upon me," because He had anointed me. So everybody in here that's a dang minister yes. has been anointed with the Holy Ghost. You may not yet have the Holy Ghost with the mighty word. Ah, speaking in other tongues as the Lord giving to others. But if you if you are a dang, yes, sir. then the Holy Spirit for all the rest of us, either, yes. either we were fakes that yes. prayed over you, yes. or you the fake that's running yes. without you, the Holy Ghost is in you. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. You got the Holy Teach. Ghost. I mean, well, the Holy Ghost got you. Teach. Yes, and that the power of the Holy Spirit is stronger than just making you happy on Sunday morning. All right. Come on. Yeah. Or when you get to a weak place in your service, yes. you need him. You say, I feel the health coming on. Yes, yes, sir. Well, I have to have one you got started. Yes, sir. The Holy Spirit inside of us is the power that helps us to heal. Come on. If you, yeah. if you haven't tried it, you ought to try it Sunday morning. Yes. Is there anybody here that's sick? I, I know I'm not.
or Robert, and I, I know I'm not Catherine Coleman, and I know I'm not Ben Hinn, but, but the Holy Spirit is the healer. And I can't promise you that's going to happen right now. All I can just say, the Lord told me to lay hands on it. In fact, right now, who's, who's in here that's sick right now, really? Yeah, I'm sick, baby. Where's a preacher over here that's ordained? I'm looking for yes. one. Come yes. on, go. Come here, come here. This, this one raised their hand. Which, which one of them? There she is. Let's go yes. there and pray for her. Why? Because we can't sit around acting oh, like this is a lot of uh, hocus pocus. We don't know what it is. Both of us don't pray for you. That way, if you get here, you don't know where it is. This one or me. <laughs> it's a whole Come on. This is sister raised her hand here. We do not know what her condition is. But we pray that the truth of the gospel said, call for the elders. So here we are. We're laying our hands on her. We don't have the oil right here, but we're just saying, will you touch her? Have thine own way, Lord. Have thine own way. Thou art the potter. We're just the plan. Mold us and shape us after thou will. We are waiting to the people. Yes. Lord, will you demonstrate oh, today yes. that you're just the same as what you are promised to be able to perform it? Our God is just the same thing. In your name, yes. 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 In your name, Hallelujah. Yes. In the name and through the power of the Holy Spirit of Jesus the Christ. In love and light. Let everything that is not of the light be removed. And so it is. 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 We send it back to whence it has come from. Let it go, my sister. Let it go. You cannot live here anymore. Anymore. It's got to go. Yours is holy and faithful. Yours is holy and faithful service. So it is. Let the church say amen. Let the church these problems 
than otherwise. That, so, so did, did I say let everybody say the environment? Yeah. People in New York didn't want to say environment, but after Sandy came through, yeah. some of them would begin to believe that global warming may be, yeah, may be real. Yeah. The environment makes a whole lot of difference. Yeah. Say socioeconomic conditions. Even without identifying the particular virus or whatever it is, it's just going to be worse over in there until the conditions in that community improve. But then there's also, and notice I left this to the fact, that the healthcare enterprises, all right, it, they, they make a whole lot of difference, and they have been at work. Thank God that some of them got started before us, but this is no time for guilt. guilt. Guilt and shame will exacerbate most of the problems we got, so let's don't hang in that too long. Yeah. But anyway, the healthcare enterprise, the hospitals, the clinics, yeah. the departments of health, pharmacies, the insurance companies, etc., all of that makes a whole lot of difference. But I left one out for last because we are running the relay race. And uh, I don't know the exact percentage, I could get the exact percentage, but I, you would be surprised. I, I, I hope I'm not wrong when I say, ma'am, it is likely that almost is 40 close enough that 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 40 percent of the health outcomes in general are related to human behavior. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And I know in regards to HIV AIDS, yeah. we we hold the last administration of remediating possibility. Mm -hmm. If it's about mm -hmm. how we behave in terms of whether it's safe sex or whatever, we are the agency assigned by our society to help people develop the capacity to say yay or nay. Mm -hmm. You don't know yeah. hear me. Yeah. It's the church. Yeah. I know mama's help and all, but the church is supposed to be the agency that teaches the culture how to exercise Speaks to muscle control. <laughs> the moral and ethical behavior of people, that's supposed to be our expertise. We are the ones that help folks to know that all things may be lawful, but it's not beneficial. And to teach people how to approach life so that their behavior does not become a death sentence. Yes. Yes. I put it yes. like that. Yes. The church mm. is an agency that has the contract yes. Mm. Yes. Yes. as a part of the social contract. Yes. Mm. It's the churches that have the responsibility of helping a community to learn how to act right. Yes. My, my, my. Did you know? See, you, yeah. see, you just thought that the reason we were helping you <laughs> was because we like to show we have community consciousness. No, man. It ain't that. It's our, it's our job. Oh, we just glad you there to help us. We're not here to, you, you're not here to help you. we just glad that you are here to help us do what we are supposed to know how to do. Yes. And uh, since it has to do with sexuality a lot, in this case, yes. that's why early on I told you that I, 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 I think that uh, we, if we could get real about sexuality, mm. Mm. What, what, what are you prepared to teach people about safe sex. Mm. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And I want to say something to you. That if you spend a lot of your time beating up on people, you will not be very effective That's right. That's right. in teaching very much about anything. That's right. Amen. And we were good at it. Yes. My sermon goes sour. All I need to do is start talking about folks' sexes. Yeah. Yeah. Hormones. Oh, yeah. oh, 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 then the deacons will wake up. <laughs> so now I'm getting ready to beat up on somebody. And there's a lot of sadomasochism going on in the pulpit. Oh, 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 o
Yes. And then you start beating up on somebody. Yes. And yes. folks like to hit me again. Yes. I ain't into that, y'all. <laughs> So anyway, in the realm of human behavior is the possibility of ending the epidemic. So I was under great conviction because I had to think about how good a job have I done helping to equip people. I want to tell you, you all thought I was just trying to give you shock back. If the mama beats up on the kid in regards to party training, mm -hmm. it may very well be that, that the mother, without knowing it, the mother surely wouldn't do it if she thought about it, would not have spent time trying to establish her as the as the external force of peristalsis. Preachers used to act like it was their responsibility. Right. Uh -huh. Right. To help folks be him. Mm. Yeah, I got it. <laughs> Where did that? I'm gonna control this. <laughs> I, 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 I'm going to control yeah, the rhythmic yeah. process yeah. by which your large yes. intestines uh, empty yeah, yourself. Like we yes, we did. We acted like the primary yeah. thing is yeah. doing what Reverend Pastor said. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But if you cultivate a culture in which folks think primarily about what the pastor say about yes, it, sir, yes. then you have to be with them in the bathroom. Yes, sir. And you also have to go with them in the bedroom. Jeez, Jeez. And you have, to, you have to pick out who they're going to go in there with. Teach. And then you're going to have to watch what they do. Oh, and, and you're going to have to deal with the consequences of what they do. Yes, sir. If you want to take responsibility for the sexual life of folks, go ahead. <laughs> I found out all I can do to try to be a pretty good steward of what I got. Yeah. Yeah. Yes, you know what, what I got yes, left. Yes, do y'all understand? I'm, I'm dramatized. Mister, I hope you won't show this to anybody <laughs> out in the public. This, this won't look right. The point, the point, the point, I'm, the point I'm trying to you know, is the church thought that it was being righteous of the God. Yes. Uh -huh. yes. Even Jesus told Judas, yes. do what you're going to do. Come on. Yes. Yes. If that's who you are, right. you yes, might sir. as well learn that you are headed for judgment and perdition. Yes. They don't need me saying, Judas, please don't All die. Right. All right. Yeah. Yeah. I hear you, yeah. sir. Yeah. Yeah. Do you want children who, who learn that it's my responsibility yes. to decide what I'm going to do for yeah. myself? Yeah. I, I can't follow you yes. yeah, yeah. to your junior senior prom. No, yeah. 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 I got a revival to do. Uh, yeah, 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 yeah. Do, you, do, do you cultivate a, a sense of responsibility? Right. Yes. 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 To, do, to do what's right. Yes. Do you teach them why this is right? Yes. Do you yeah. Oh, Betty Ford, I appreciate your saying, just say no. Yes. But why? Yeah. yeah. Uh, Unless you do uh, uh, a different kind of thing. Well, it, it, because it's not good for your health. Why? Yeah. If you're not prepared to answer 25 whys, <laughs> then you have taught yet. You need to revise your lesson plan <laughs> to help people understand yes. that there are reasons why. Yes. And I mentioned fornication. By the way, I want to ask you all, uh, <laughs> y'all are looking more, I think, righteous churches than mine. I, I sit down trying to do pastoral counseling, and then I get to the point I want to talk to you all about the sexual life. But Reverend, <laughs> you know, we, we've been living together for about, I think, you know, we've been living together for a pretty good little while. In fact, I hate to say this, just, I guess, just a very small percentage of people that I got a chance to marry where I was that hadn't already known a little bit more about what I was going to say to <laughs> <than I was. laughs> Just God 
hold us responsible for living lives for people mm. or for equipping them mm. to live their lives, to work it out yeah. with fear and trembling. And we the fear because you can't mess up, you know? Yes. So that's why it's fear and trembling because, Lord, I want to please you. But I want to be pleased myself. And, 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 and so a fundamental change will have to happen. If you want to teach these people, somehow we got to go through a process. I'm going to mention this now. And uh, I don't know for how long I've been talking. You're all right. <laughs> um, let me see if I can briefly say something about what our message is. And I'm going to do this in very short. <laughs> sure. Sure, and our message, I think, should be that our God wants us to be well, wants us to be whole, and wants us to live the abundant life. And also, other, but when God calls our attention not so much to the cause as to the cure in our situation. And that each creature, and I guess that's why you have to have an extended program because you can't learn it all in one day. There is such thing as body theology. Yes. And all preachers have, whether you went to seminary or not, you really do have to have a basic grasp of body yes. theology. Yes. And body theology might teach the following. We are fearfully and wonderfully yes. made by yes. God. Yes. These bodies are wonderful. Yes. Yes. Oh, thank God. Yes. Thank God. That's good. If you think that the body is bad, that's the alien form of theology. I mean, you might want to call it bad, but God said, I made it. Now, maybe there's some flaws that have come along, but fundamentally, I made it. And let me mention primarily about sexuality. The sexuality is a wonderful thing. Do you realize that if there was no sex, there would be no continuing life? Yeah. 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 Don't realize it. So it's a good thing. Yeah. Oh, it's a wonderful thing. Yeah. And, and because it is so essential to the continuation of the species, God has made it to be a pleasurable yes. and powerful yes. dynamic in our lives. And, 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 and until the church could get to the place that can say, thank you, Lord. You woke us up this morning. The, uh, uh, our bed was not a cooling yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Our sheep was not a rain. Thank you, yeah. because, because you, you gave me a mind to get up. Yeah. Thank you for putting, putting food on the table. Yeah. But Lord, thank you for the gift of uh, sexuality. Yeah. Oh, thank you for the joy and the fellowship and the communion that's made possible when bodies meet together yeah. in your neck. Yeah. 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 Until, until yes, God. we can be as grateful yes, God. God. give us sexuality yeah. as we are for the plate of food we're eating yes. or for the friendships we know, yeah. we're still as it were, in the kindergarten of the body theology. Yes. So we need to be able to celebrate that. Yeah, yeah. And we say, the Lord is such a wonderful and powerful gift. Give us the strength mm. to know how yeah. to possess our vessel in sanctification. Yeah. Yes, I pray that too. Yeah. Yes. And about fornication. Yeah. Yeah. Since you thought I was going to leave it behind. That <laughs> too. <laughs> I really think that if you teach fornication, a more important word to say than don't do it is to say why somehow it keeps cropping up in the Bible. I would not advise you to go through a long detail of all the ugly things that could happen like infection. Conception mm. and detection. Mm. Yes. Mm. I would say to the people, uh, so I was so disappointed when my daddy told me, boy, uh, you know what we preach around here. I suppose act married till you get married. Mm. Yeah. But, but, listen. Listen here. I'm going to give you this. And I'm expecting you to do right. 
<laughs> I'm disappointed because I've been saved for a long time. Yeah. Why, why he gonna give me some, why, is, why is he giving me a condom? <laughs> doesn't he expect me to do right? <laughs> doesn't, doesn't, doesn't he expect me to shun fornication? <laughs> Said, if you find yourself not doing what you're supposed to do. Uh, you, 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 you have this. You know how to use it? I was so disappointed. Did he act like, did he act like, did he act like I wasn't always say yeah? <laughs> if you preach about fornication, Please, it can't be related to why that's there. Even if you are not claiming that you're going to be the policeman mm -hmm. to follow. And even if you have to make some provisions in case somebody cannot possess their vessel in sanctification and honor all the time, that the ideal is this. The ideal is that love will take place at the point where you are capable of taking responsibility for your consent to the process. It takes place where you are willing to have mutual vulnerability with the one with whom you're doing it. And it also takes place where you are committed not just to the physiological dynamic, but you understand that you're committed emotionally to this relationship. And that whatever happens, the two of you who engage are going to be responsible for the outcome of and said, guess what? Best condition of which that to happen is marriage. Mm -hmm. Teach! No, what I'm trying to say is we spend so much time yes. simply saying just say no. Yes. That we rob them of our support for understanding go. why it's in the book. Mm -hmm. And that some folks, and this is another thing my daddy told me, he must have been a liberal Pentecostal. Uh, <laughs> he said, now I want to explain this to you. He says, my job is to teach you what an A looks like. Making an A. He said, but he been to a lot of colleges, but he never saw a college that kicked out the B and C students. Here's what A is. I can, I, can, I can deal with that. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. That the conditions that fornication was trying to get at are important. Mm -hmm. The people simply slavishly follow the pastor's advice. It usually won't last longer than high school graduation. <laughs> when they get to college, all of a sudden they got to try to figure out how to control that speaks to muscles. I'm using that as a sample. You understand what I'm trying to say? Because yeah. if you let somebody else try to be the primary motive force behind your morality, you have to carry them as a package with you to keep reinforcing it. Because when you get to another context, you'll be challenged in some different way. Yes. Yeah. Is right. Reverend Forbes saying throw out fornication? No. I'm saying achieve what fornication was trying to achieve. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Anyway, that's all I got to say on that. Now I'm coming to the end. In terms of our message, in body theology, there is a formula for health, happiness, and healing, and I've already told you, so I couldn't hold that back. OP within DP. Our pleasure within divine pleasure. Tell me, anybody, whatever you do, hey, bro, in the back. Some folks are gay, some folks are straight. The real challenge is tell those fellas that they will discover that their lives will be more fulfilled, happier, and more sustained if they know who they are mm -hmm. and have good conversation with God regularly so that they can decide whether they're going to be celibate. If they, and if they're not going to be celibate, what they're going to do, they got to make a deal with God. Because if they have to talk with God, if God is mad at them while they're doing their thing, that ain't the healthiest and happiest outcome for them. Mm -hmm. And don't let them decide that what God's mad about is exactly what the preacher was fussing about last Sunday. Mm -hmm. They got to know for themselves. And therefore, they need to go to some Bible study with somebody that's trying to teach them 
I'm, in our church, we did change all right, but we but 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 we we need to let you know what the Lord is trying to get at. Mm. You do the best you can with what you got, but this is what we are trying to achieve. If they hate gay people, that is not the Bible study that they ought to be in. All right. All right. They won't be able to help. Anyway, there we are called to make sure to present our bodies as a living sacrifice. Yeah. Right? Yeah. 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 But more than that, finally, I think I've got to leave because I, 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 I just said too much here for today. I'm going to say something for you. Uh, can I come back? No, come back in January. All right, all right. Yeah. Yeah. Just, anyway, this, this is the last thing. To gay people and straight people, mm -hmm. folks with HIV and those that don't, and those that know it, those that don't know. Mm -hmm. The thing that I really love about Paul, about some things he said that I wasn't too good about slaves and masters and stuff, but he did say, Know ye not that your body is the temple of the Holy Spirit. Mm -hmm. And what we need to do is to teach people a vocation of learning how to take care of a temple. Mm -hmm. This is my body. In fact, I, I, by the way, I'm 77 years old. And as soon as I get my money right, I'm going to go and sign up at the Y. You know why? Yes, because I need to preserve whatever I got as long as I got it. Oh, yes, right. Right. And, 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 I, I mean, I want to... I, I, do y'all have any subsidization of preachers to get some? I, I'm you, if, if your department would subsidize some, some training uh, and, and some gymnasium stuff for preachers, it would uplift the quality of life with them. But when they, when they get through, you know, you know, doing it like this and other, they ain't gonna be nearly as mean on Sunday morning. The people say, come on, it's just so a grant, I'd like to make a grant to the health department. Yeah. If you get pastors exercise, yeah. in fact, there ought to be a preacher's uh, hour. Yeah. They come in and get it free. Oh, let me tell you. <laughs> Y'all, I got more to say, but I'm like Jesus. There are many things I have to say to you, but you cannot receive it now. I have a focus.